Hello painters, I'm Debbie from acrylicpouring.com, back today for a bit more painting fun, and today I think it really could be fun. So, you may have um, seen or heard of Holton Rower. Now, I'm not even sure if that's how you pronounce his name correctly, but he's very famous for his poured paintings, um, and he pours them over, typically over many layers of things, and the paint kind of spreads out, and he does things on perspex and things too, to give them a really 3D look. So I thought I would have a go at that today. I've also been inspired by the lovely lady from Sauve Arts. Oh, is that her channel, Sauve Art? Yes, I think so. Um, and she has done a number of these using the bottom of a plastic bottle and I've been looking for a while trying to make all sorts of things out of um, plastic containers and yogurt pots and then when I saw hers I thought oh my god I'm such a dunce that is absolutely perfect so I've cut the bottle off and also I have made I don't know if you'll be able to see some little slits around the, the bottom of the bottle because I want the paint to not only run over the sides and go outside but I want it to maybe run into the middle and make a design in the middle too and because it's going to create um, more or less a round kind of pour I thought it would be great to do it on a record so I've got my record all ready and prepared I'm going to stick that in the middle now in terms of the paints I'm going to use, I am going to use all my paints. Everything that I've got mixed up in all of my squeezy bottles, they're all going on there. And I've got a lot of colours and I'm just going to throw them all on because um, colour choices are not my strong point anyway. So I may as well just throw them all in and then we'll see what happens. I've also got a few leftover bits and pieces in some little pots and things so I can throw those in too. And I have no real plan, which is often the way when I stand in front of the camera and decide to paint something. So let's have a look. Yes, you can see, see it well in the camera just here. So I'm just going to throw some paints in the centre. We'll see how they run down these little channels and what beautiful designs they create on the record. Now, another reason I went for a record today is because I'm thinking this is going to use a lot of paint. And if I do it on a canvas, it could be that the weight of the paint will make the canvas sag in the middle. So that's another reason why I've gone for a record, so that hopefully we can um, keep the centre um, flat rather than have things pool into the middle. So I am just going to make a start. I'm going to shake up a few paints. I'm going to throw a few colours on and let's see what happens.
Okay, so I think we could say that I safely have enough paint on here. Now, one thing that I did notice, I clearly hadn't made my little grooves in the bottle of my bottle big enough because I really don't have very much paint in the center. A little bit seeped through, just I think, you know, the first few colors that I put on there. And after that, they all went out rather than in. So if you're gonna do it, probably much make um, larger holes so that you can get your paint through to the center. Because now I've got a void in the center of here. So what I think I'm gonna do, I've got loads of paint and I've certainly got a lot of colors and a lot of thickness of paint too. So I'm gonna carefully lift up this center and out the way and then see if I can just gently maneuver it. And maybe this center will close up a little bit if I leave it. Yes, okay. So I'm just gonna sit and be patient for a second because I can see the paint is running in towards the center. So I'm gonna just leave that to close up and then I'll tilt just a little bit so the paint goes off the edge. So, okay, I'm not patient enough. I'm gonna try and put some little um, color in the center. Maybe start off with some white. And then it won't need very much. If I just put a few colors, I think they will spread out and fill that center and give it kind of like a completed look. So let's see. Yeah, that's probably all I need to do. And then it looks good. Okay, so now it's gone slightly off center, slightly dripping on this side. So I'm just going to slightly turn it back that way. And then I think we're pretty much gonna be covered. Just, I can tap the edge of the paint here and that just brings it enough to the edge that this side is done. So a little bit of a tip and let's see. I, don't, I want to cover the record, but at the same time, I don't want to um, distort the lovely shapes too much if I can. So I'm going to just do it a minimal amount and hopefully keep most of the paint on the record. Let's see what we can do. I think probably unless I have it completely perfectly level um, when it's drying, it's going to end up... Um, slightly going off center anyway because you know the paint's going to continue to move as it dries and it'll probably end up being slightly off center but at least if i've got the record covered okay so that's my point of 100 percent coverage and at the moment it's kind of centered i think i'm going to tip it back just a little bit see where i've got the yellow here going off the edge and this one it's not. So I'm gonna tip it slightly that way so that the yellow on this side goes to the edge. Come on. Okay. And now back so that my middle is in the center. Hopefully I can get the paints kind of even. Okay. So this is gonna drip a lot, I think, because there's a lot of paint on there. And as it continues to spread out and move, it's gonna fall over the sides. I'm a little bit disappointed that I think some of my paints were a bit thin because I haven't got quite the, um, the crisp separation between the colors. And of course, also my paints were all mixed with silicon because that's how I keep mine all pre-mixed. So probably um, it looks cool. And I like it so far, but my advice I think so far, if you want to try this for yourself, is probably to mix your paints separately from um, ones that you might already have prepared. because so it's probably going to do better just a little bit thicker than maybe I would normally do it. And also with less silicon so that I'm not getting the, um, the little bits where the, the cells are trying a little bit to, to come up through the colors. Okay, so let me bring you down. We'll show you the details and then I'll come back and show what it looks like when it's all finished. So there you can see, when I said I'm gonna use all the colors, I really did use all the colors. <laughs> There's a lot of colors in here and it looks kind of cool. I think it looks kind of uh, psychedelic if you like that kind of thing. So uh, it certainly makes me happy. I love anything with lots of colors and lots and lots of bright colors. And I think in the end, the center came out pretty cool. I mean, obviously it's not perfect, but uh, I think by just adding those couple of dots in there, it kind of centered up a little bit and uh, there it is, looking pretty good. So, um, there's a lot of paint. I've already got a lot of dribbles down the bottom there and uh, I'll dry it up and show you what it looks like. Hopefully it won't get too much cracking in it. So here it is dried and I think I really like it. It has gone a little bit more off center while it dried because obviously I didn't have it obviously quite um, 
flat enough and there was a lot of paint. It just takes a lot of paint to do this technique. But I really like the look of it now that it's finished and it's given me lots of ideas for projects that I might go on and try in the future. So far this isn't finished, it's just got one coat of um, a spray varnish on there but I will get round to finishing this one off and you'll find it in my Etsy shop at some point in the future. So I think if I was to do this again, like I've mentioned, I think I would mix up my paints separately so they would make them a little bit thicker I think than my usual formula. Um, and I wouldn't put any silicon in them um, and maybe do it with less colours. I think the um, emphasis is on the shapes itself. You don't need as many colours in order for it to look interesting. So maybe even like a sort of a monochrome, you know, all different shades of a single colour. Blues, of course. Or maybe go golds. Yeah, maybe a metallic and glitter one. Oh, good gracious. Can never get enough gold glitter and metallics. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this project and that you'll give it a try yourself and maybe come up with some different ideas for things that you can use to pour your paint over that will make some interesting shapes on your canvas. See you soon.